want to upgrade your seats. Have you ever been to a sporting event and, and somebody has the great fortune of upgrading to like some couch right in the front row? This is your opportunity. So kids, if you want, we have purposely set aside this whole space here. And I'm, I'm just going to say there might be some perks to sitting up on the floor up here and, uh, and hanging out in this space. So you can come right now. Yeah, come on up. You come and find, you get the best house right here, right in front. Now here's the thing, parents. If your kid starts to get a little unruly, maybe picking their nose or whatever, and, and, and you start to get concerned, you need to know they are my problem now. Alright? So I will sort it out if it needs to get sorted out. Um, but uh, yeah, so thank you, thank you guys for coming. I'm actually looking for a volunteer. But don't volunteer until you know what you're volunteering for. I'm looking for somebody who's sitting really quiet to volunteer to tell us the story of Joshua. Oh, we've got a volunteer over here. All right. Um, okay, good. All right. Yeah. Oh, we got this volunteer just kind of decided to volunteer. Are you guys excited about this? Are we seeing yet another skill? Um, okay, just a second. sitting quietly. Uh, what is your name? Gary. Oh. So this is Gary. Gary, how old are you? Five. <laughs> Gary, you got a really low voice for someone who's five. <laughs> he says, uh, how old are you? Uh, I'm 47. Well, you're really short for 47. <laughs> Gary's kind of cheeky. Gary, I saw you put your hand up there uh, saying that you could tell us the story of Joshua. You think you can do that? Okay, well, let her in. Once upon a time, there was actually a guy named Godo Joseph. Do you guys know who that is? Joseph? Godo Joseph, you know him? Yeah. Yeah, well, Joseph led his family to Egypt. Remember, they, they saved everybody from starvation, kind of saved the world, saved the day. Anyways, his family ended up in Egypt, and their family grew, and grew, and grew, and grew, that's right. And, but the problem was, they ended up becoming slaves in Egypt. And Pharaoh was the leader of Egypt. He was a bad man. And he made them slaves, made them do all sorts of work. Until one day, a guy named Moses came on the scene. And God used Moses to set the Israelites free from being slaves. Remember, he, he got them out of Egypt, walked them through the Red Sea, into the wilderness. And God made Moses and the people of Israel a promise. He said, I'm going to give you a promised land. And Moses was excited, except for Moses did something he wasn't supposed to do. So Moses did not get to go into the promised land. Very sad. But the guy who is next in line to lead the people of Israel, <laughs> Joshua, he ended up getting to lead Israel into the promised land. Great story, right? But that's not it. He led them across the Jordan River into the promised land and they went through the promised land and they conquered the entire promised land and joshua was the man that god used to do that here that's really good yeah maybe you should preach i've been telling you that for a while okay actually i'm done with i'm done with you gary good job um i want you to go back to your seat oh great now he's just gonna play dead you know what gary you go back in, in there, and uh, you guys can say goodbye to Gary. No, he's sleeping. He's sleeping. 
Oh, I'm a sleepy cat sitting while you're sleeping. That's just a toe. That's a sleepy toe. All right, Gary did a good job, my wife, and I've been telling her. I said, I want to do something with a puppet, but I don't have a clue. And this was like last night. I still don't really have a clue what I want to do with a puppet. But um, as you can probably tell, but Gary just told us the story of a guy named Joseph. And Joseph, said Joseph, he once said Joseph too, but Joshua. And Joshua is the guy we've been talking about for the last seven weeks. Today is the last day, the last Sunday, that we're going to be talking about Joshua. Starting next week, you know what we're going to be talking about? What? Marriage. And you guys can sit right here. No, you're not invited, actually. We're going to start talking about marriage next week. But today we want to wrap up the story of Joshua. If you've got your Bibles, you can open up to the very last chapter in Joshua. Is Joshua 24. And I'm really glad that Gary did such a thorough job of explaining what happened. Because I'm not going to go over the whole story. I want to focus in on one verse. And I'm going to focus in on that one verse in two parts. But before I do that, here's what we do in Big People Church. We tell you what the big idea is. This is the thing that I want to go into your brain and into your heart before you leave today. All right? Here's the thing. We can be strong and courageous when we're where we're supposed to be. That's a lot of words there. We're where we're supposed to be. All right? So that's the big idea. In fact, this whole sermon series, the last seven weeks, we've been talking about being strong and courageous. And I'm not just talking about strong, like you guys can tell how strong I am, right? Um, not just that kind of manly David Buzz is strong, but uh, strong in the Lord, having a confidence and a courage that comes from God. And that's the strength and courage that Joshua had, and we've been describing for the last seven weeks. But at this point in the story, in Joshua 24, God has given them all of the land, all of the promised land, all of Canaan land. And now he's looking back and he's saying, in fact, it's Joshua who's going to say something really important to the people of Israel, to all these people who just conquered all this land. This is the first part of what he says. He says, choose this day whom you will serve. So Joshua said, you've seen what God can do. Do you guys remember the story of, of Jericho, the walls of Jericho? No. There was this huge city, and the people of Israel needed to conquer this city. And the way they did it, God told them to walk around the city, and he made the walls fall down. God did all sorts of incredible miracles like this throughout the whole land of Canaan. And now they've conquered that whole area. And Joshua is giving a big speech to the people who are going back to their parts of the promised land. And he says, this is a really, really important decision that you need to make. Choose today who you're going to serve. Now it only makes sense that these people of Israel, they've seen what God has done. It would only make sense that they would choose to serve God, right? And, and that's kind of the way it works. When, when you read a book, when you read a story, you see the whole thing happen in kind of a short amount of time. It doesn't take you long to read the, the book of Joshua. It's only 24 chapters. When you see it all in front of you, you see all these miracles, it's just like, boy, you should follow Jesus. You should serve God. But for the people of Israel... Just like in our regular lives, there are lots of distractions. There are lots of other things that might be uh, tempting to serve or to follow. In these days, they had other gods and other kings and other nations that were attractive to the people of Israel. They would look at their neighbors and go, ooh, I kind of like the way they do that. And so, yeah, I want to follow God, but I kind of also want to follow that. And Joshua was really clear. If you read the way he says it in, verse, in chapter 24, around verse 15, he says, it's got to be one choice. You either choose to serve God, make him your king, or you don't. 
Joshua is very, very clear. There is no kind of, I'm going to sort of follow him. Um, for you guys sitting on the ground here, how many of you are in school? No, not right now. How many of you, well, not right now, right? But how many are, are school aged? There you go. How many of you have ever had a teacher? Okay, even a Sunday school teacher. So, when you're in school, yeah. who is the person that you follow? Yeah. The, the teacher. So the teacher tells you that you need to stay in your seat. You should stay in your seat, right? You should follow what your teacher says. It's you're kind of. It sounds like a powerful word, but you're serving your teacher. They're they're the boss. But when you when it's like the bell rings at the end of the day, do you stay in your seat all weekend? No. You go on to somewhere else. You actually have another boss. Mom or dad, right? They, they're, they're the boss. And if they tell you to sit in your chair all, all weekend, then you gotta do that too, right? That's kind of abusive, but uh, ah, okay, move on. <laughs> the point of the matter is, sometimes you serve your teachers, sometimes you serve your parents. Right now, you're kind of under me, under my guidance and wisdom. <laughs> all right, so you have different masters. And sometimes that happens with people too. Some of your moms and dads, they go to work and they have a boss. And they got to do what the boss says at work. And then when they come home, then mom's the boss, right? And they have to do what mom says. Does that, does that sound all right? Yeah. And, and, and sometimes they have different bosses. But on the weekend, they get to live a little bit differently than when they're at work. But Joshua is saying something really interesting and very, very powerful. He's saying... You get to choose. You get to make the choice. Are you going to serve God? But if you do choose to serve God, you got to be all in. There, there aren't days off. It's not like you serve God on Sunday and then you got the other six days of the week to serve yourself and do whatever you want. Joshua is saying, be very careful about this decision you make because you have to be all in. When we choose, choose to serve God, we choose to serve God with our whole lives. He is king of our whole lives. All right? I want to show you a video about making decisions. This is really important. I brought in an expert on making decisions. You might recognize him. If, if we could switch over to the video and make sure the volume is really high so people can hear this. Let's hear what Kid President has to say. Researchers found this. We make thousands of choices each day. Thousands. In fact, the more responsibilities that you have, the more choices you have to make. These options all up in your face all the time. And on top of all this, with each choice comes a consequence. Every choice that you make leads to something good or not so good. Like that old said, everything happens for a reason. Sometimes that reason is you ate a whole roll of Oreos in one sitting. If you excuse me, I'd have to take it. Okay, I'm bad. Yeah, that's a bad decision. If you watch this video, that means you're awesome. Too bad. You're awesome. How do you make awesome choices? Here's a few choices for how you can make choices. You can be a person. Don't think about it. Just mind and sleep. Pour the cake and do it. Disclaimer. I don't recommend this choice for making choices. Now you can do it, but it'll lead to mixed results. It's especially dangerous while picking. 
can be impossible. I know it's what you have in making choices. Don't do anything. This is a choice to not make any choices. Which is a poor choice. Just stand there, wait, do nothing. It's an option. It's always an option. You could say nothing, do nothing, but uh, fair warning, then you'll be nothing. Just say it. And that's just for how you can make a choice. Just be a follower. Yeah, just do what everyone else is doing. When you're a follower, you don't really have to think. It's real simple. Just look around, see what everyone else is doing. Is everyone just complaining about something? You can do that too. Is everyone doing what everyone else is doing? You can do that too. Is everyone eating the entire row of Oreo from what's in it? Just do that. Look, I mean, no. Excuse me. <laughs> Sorry, I'm back. I have to make better choices. For being a follower, you can make that choice. Just a really big problem with that. The world needs you. So how's about this? Focus on being someone worth following. I like that choice. A little bit of how you can make your choices, be thoughtful. Warning, this requires thinking. It takes some thought to be thoughtful. But thinking is something we should do more often. Think about what do I care about? What's important to me? What kind of world do I want to live in? Do my choices help create that world? I want to live in a world more dancing. So what do I do? A little bit of dancing. The choices you make help make the world. All of us together make big choices sometimes too. Like we all try to come together and make a big decision. Like in an election. Who will lead our country? That's a big decision. Whatever happens there, there's something that you can't forget. Just how powerful you are. There are no small people and there are no small choices. You, you're making big choices every single day. And they make a big difference. Whether you're president in a big fancy old office or not the president. Or just came up for camera and some cardboard. The choices matter. On election day and every single day. Real change happens right in your backyard. The little decisions that you think a little are actually a really big deal. The choices we make make our lives. In your life, it's an awesome one. Make the kind of choices that are worthy of that awesome life. I'm going to make a decision right now. This world is a little more so I'm going to get it right now. some quick questions. Do you remember any of the ways we can make choices? Do you remember the first one? Impulsive. Be impulsive. Thank you, Stefan. So far, adults one, kids zero. It's not a competition, but yeah, it's a competition. What's the second way you can make decisions? No choice at all. Adults two. You're being too polite. You gotta just yell things out. This isn't really school. This is summer holidays. So you can just do nothing at all. Okay, one way to make choices is just to kind of sit there and do nothing. What's the third choice? Eat a bunch of Oreos and get out of the point for the kids. You know, that's a bad choice, but uh, good. What's another, what's another way you can make choices? Follow. That sounds, you're kind of, what, you, you graduated, so now are you full on adult? I don't know. Oh, yeah. uh, you are full on adult. Another point for the adults. Now, this is the point I want to talk about. He, he said, Kid President said, that it's not a good idea to be a follower. I think that's partly true. How did you have now, if, if uh, let's say Ari only ever did what Elliot, his big brother, did. And so he didn't make any decision. He was just going to be a full-on follower of Elliot. Ari, I got a question for you. Does Elliot always make the right choice? His head was shaking. No, and that's normal because Elliot, you're not perfect, are you? You're pretty close, but you're not perfect. So that's what Kid President's talking about. If we just follow the people around us, we're going to make bad decisions based on their bad decisions. So in that way, I agree with Kid President that we should just be a follower. However, if we never follow anything, you know what that means? That means that we make up everything as we go along. We're making all of the decisions about everything. We're not following somebody else's example. We're not following somebody else's decisions. We're just doing whatever feels right for us. Does that seem like an all the time good decision? No. I know for me, if I follow kind of whatever I'm feeling, I'm going to do a lot of silly 
things. I was going to say stupid, but can't say stupid, can you? <laughs> you can do a lot of silly things when you just follow your own feelings. So I want to change one little thing. We shouldn't be just followers and do what everybody else is doing. But we should be following somebody. Right now, if Annabella was not a follower, if, if she only ever did what she wanted to do, well, actually, that's kind of what she does, isn't it? But, okay, let's take Tegan as an example. So her big brother, Tegan, if Tegan only ever did whatever he wanted, Tegan, what's your favorite food? Do you like cookies? Peanut butter sandwich. That's actually a pretty good decision. <laughs> but that's all, if, if that's all Tegan ever ate, because that's all he ever felt like eating, then he'd be missing out on the beauty of fruits and vegetables, am I right? And those of you who know me know that I don't eat a lot of fruit and vegetables. But you would not, you would probably get scurvy and die. Now be sad, Tegan, be very sad. So he's got to, he's got to follow somebody else when it comes to the decisions about what he eats. That's why God gave him a mommy and a daddy. Right now, Tegan's job, because he's still young, is to follow his mommy and daddy. That's a healthy choice to follow. Now, if Tegan just followed everybody else, not a healthy choice, but if he follows the people that he's meant to follow, that's a good choice. Now, I got a question for you. Where do you think his mommy and daddy get their ideas about how to lead? Who are they following, Gracie? Their mom and dad. They're following, you know what, that's, a, that's very true. They've and learned a lot from their mom and dad over the years. They've seen what it looks like to be a mom and a dad, and they've learned about that from them. That's a very good answer. The other thing that we've been given, and Joshua is an excellent example of this, because Joshua listened to God. His strength and his courage came from God. He followed God, and then all of Israel followed Joshua. So even Joshua, who was the leader of all of Israel, he followed someone. And did you know that every one of us is meant to follow someone? And even though Tegan is meant to follow his mom and dad, even now, Tegan is smart enough He's learning in our Sunday school classes, and he's learning at home, that it's important that he knows who God is, that he knows who Jesus is, so that he can learn to follow God better. Does that make sense? So even though Kid President says, don't be a follower, I do agree with one part when he says, don't just do what everybody else is doing. Okay? God made each one of you, made each one of us, very uniquely. He made Jessica different than he made Scott, and different than he made Brandon. They've got different gifts, they've got different talents, they've got different strengths, they've got different weaknesses. And he's made us all to be individual, but to all follow the same God. And I'm going to tell you something from my life. I'm very old, alright? Very old. I'm, like, it's, I'm almost done here on this earth. I've just been around for so long. And I have learned some things. I have seen that when I follow God, good things tend to happen. But then when I follow my own ideas, bad things tend to happen. And it all comes back, we can put that slide back up, Caleb. It all comes back to making a choice. And Joshua tells the people of Israel, choose this day whom you will serve. And then he says one more thing. It's the next part of verse 15. He says, as for me and my house, so Joshua had a family. He says, for me, Joshua, and for the people in my family, we are going to serve the Lord. We are going to choose to follow God. And again, what Joshua meant by that, oops, what Joshua meant by that is he's going to do it all the time. He's going to, as best he can, he's going to follow what God has for him. And all of his other decisions are going to be based on what God has for him. All right, so I told you at the beginning what I wanted you to learn. Here's the life lesson. Our decisions about who we follow or what we follow 
will make a huge difference in our lives. I want to give you one more picture. So, would you rather be the leader or the follower? Leader. Leader. That kind of sounds glamorous, right? Like, you probably, I know Gracie well enough to know, she'd probably like to have the microphone right now. So would Gary. Gary would like to just keep preaching and preaching and preaching with his low voice. Uh, but he's only five, so he shouldn't be doing that right now. Okay? It's glamorous to be the leader. But you know what's interesting? When you think about, what do you guys like to do for fun? What's your favorite play thing? Taylor. Dance. Dancing. Okay. So let's say, I haven't made this be a really bad example. Um, but let's say for dancing, Taylor, that nobody ever led you and taught you what dancing was. They just kind of put you outside and said, okay, Taylor, dance. But you never even been taught what dancing is. So you didn't know if dancing is like pulling your ear or standing on one leg. You just you don't know. But because somebody taught you, either you saw it happening or somebody taught you about what you could do when you, and I've seen the way you can move your body around, you're a little more flexible than I am. Yeah. Um, because of that, you can enjoy dancing, right? It's one of your favorite things to do. But if nobody ever led you, you couldn't enjoy it. And sometimes we as adults, we don't like to be under somebody else. We don't like to be led. And a lot of times that, that creates this selfishness in us that says, okay, God, I like to follow you sometimes because I, I like coming to church, but really, I like to make my own decisions. And, and we, we kind of choose selfishness instead of following God. But just like dancing, God's got something for us. He's got a plan. He wants to care for you. He wants to teach you to dance. Well, I don't know if God wants to teach you to dance, but he, he wants to teach you things and show you things that are good for you. And when it comes to following, if we follow God, it's going to make a really positive difference in our lives. Yeah, it gives you exercise too. And when we follow, make bad decisions about who we follow, most often when we follow our own way of doing things, it can often go badly for us. All right, I'm going to invite the worship team to come back up. And as they do, I want to pray for you. And I want to pray for myself. So I want to pray for all of us. So, I don't know if you want to close your eyes or bow your heads, but let's pray together. Heavenly Father, I thank you that you are a God that is good to follow. That you want good things for us. That you have a good plan for us. I thank you for the plan of, of parents, for, for Tegan and Annabella's mommy and daddy who are, are parenting them, are, are leading them in a way that they should go. But we thank you, God, that you provide yourself and the example of your son, Jesus, that we could follow as well as parents. And that we can look at the way Jesus lived his life. And we can try and be like Christ. We can be Christ followers. So God, today I pray that each and every one of us, from the youngest to the oldest, would see the decision that we need to make. And that each of us would have the strength and the courage to choose to follow God. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Alright. You guys, it might be better for you to go back to your parents at this time. And we're going to all stand... And we're going to sing and worship together. All right, let's, let's sing. It's, it's a picture of who we get to follow. So again, when we do send you, we're going to send you and remind you of that choice. That you can choose to follow God wholeheartedly. But I do have one little plug just before that. Next week we start, like I said, a brand new sermon series. All summer long we're going to be teaching about marriage. But we're going to do it weirdly. That's, we're Northridge, right? And we're going to have couples teach you throughout the summer. And the first week, July 7th, we're going to kick off with Ryan and Tawny Douglas. They're going to teach us all about finding that work-play balance. And we're going to go right through the summer with, with different teachings on marriage. So come ready for something special. But as you leave today, again, I want to remind you that every one of you 
is not just invited to make a choice. It is mandated that you make a choice. Who are you going to serve? And I'll say, as for me and our house, we're going to serve the Lord. Be blessed, and we'll see you next week. Have a wonderful, long weekend. See you next week.